guys, welcome back to another video from me, or if you're totally new here, then welcome to my channel. My name's Millie and I'm a calligrapher who also runs a business called Blink Lettering. Today I am going to be talking about pens, which, I mean, I do calligraphy, so that was probably obvious that I was going to be talking about pens, but one question I get asked a lot is, what's the best pen out there? And I truly believe that there is a pen that is great for beginners, but I'm not going to go down that route too much today. I might talk about it a little bit later because I really like it and it's a good pen. But today I want to talk about the differences between a bigger nib brush pen and a smaller nib brush pen. So one question I get asked a lot is what is the best pen for beginners? Or the other end of the spectrum is that someone will contact me and they may have a particular pen they're using and they say they're really struggling with it and what can they do to make it easier? Now, the big thing I always push for all of my students is that smaller nib pens are just a lot easier to use. They are a bit more normal in size and the nib tends to be a little bit less flexible because it's not as big. Therefore, it's a lot easier to control those thin lines. In today's video, I want to take you through the differences between a big nib pen and a small nib pen and how Deciding what size nib to use is really important before even considering what the pen is. So I've got some pens in front of me. Some of them have smaller nibs and some of them have bigger nibs. So I'm just going to take you through each pen that I'm going to use today and we're going to compare some big nibs and some small nibs and see which works better. So on the small nib team, the first pen I've got is this pen. So this is the Pentel Brush Sign Pen or you may have seen it advertised as the Pentel Touch sign pen. As you can see by the nib, it is really small, but although it is small, it is still totally flexible. Now, if you do get your hands on one of these, then I just point out that Pentel do do a sign pen, which is just a normal felt tip, basically. So if you are on the hunt for one of these, then make sure that it either says brush or touch at the beginning of it. So that's the first pen on the small pen list. So the other two pens I'm using for the small nibs are these, and they're both the same pen. So these are the Tombow Fudosuke brush pens, potentially saying that wrong, so don't quote me on it. Uh, the reason I've got two is one of them is a hard tip, and then one of them is a soft tip. Let me just double check, I'm getting that the right way round. So one of them is a hard tip, and then this is the soft tip version. They do pretty much look the same, apart from the fact that one is blue and one is green. So the blue one is the hard tip one, and then the green, like dark black one is the soft. Like the Pentel, the nibs are really small. You can see that the hard nib actually has a bit of a smaller nib than the soft one, which is at the top. So what's great about these three pens is the soft tip is a bit softer than the Pentel, and then the hard tip is a bit harder than the Pento. So having all three pens is quite a nice balance between different flexibility of nibs. So that's our small nib pens that we're gonna be trying out today. And I'll take you through the big ones too. So first up, which is hugely popular in the calligraphy community in general, is the Tombow ABT Dual Brush Pen. So this is the same brand as these bad boys. So the same as the Funosuke brush pens but these are much bigger. It is a dual pen, which basically means that there's a nib on both sides. On this end, it's a felt tip end, so it's not flexible at all, but it's great for like adding bits of detail. The end we'll be focusing on today is this end. So as you can see, the nib is much bigger than the small brush pens. And because it is bigger, it does mean that it makes it a little bit more flexible as well. And then we've got another double-ended pen, this is the Zebra Mildliner brush pen. Again, at one end, it's got kind of like a felt tip point, so that's not flexible at all. At this end, you can see it's got a brush tip, which is the end that we'll be focusing on today. So it's not as big as the Tombow Dual brush pen, but it is still much bigger than the smaller brush pens that we'll be testing out today as well. Finally, another favorite. These are the Royal Talons Eco Line brush pens. These are super juicy. They're really nice. So the nib, again, isn't as big as the Tombow, 
but it is quite flexible so it feels like a bigger brush pen compared to the smaller lip pen and that's why I'm going to test it out today as part of the big pens in this big pens versus small pens. So these are the big pens we're going to be trying out and we're going to see how they compare to these small pens. So let's go! So for this video I'm going to be using the Rodeo Dot Pad just because it's vellum paper so it's super smooth and I know it won't fray any of the nibs on these pens. So I'm going to do a comparison side by side so you can see how different these pens are. So let's start off first with just doing a simple thin upline. So we've got the Pentel and then this is the Tombow Funosuke in soft tip and then the hard tip. So you can see all of these lines are super thin and they were really easy to control. Now I'm just going to go in with the Zebra Mild Liner first. And then the Tombow ABT Dual Brush Pen and then the Royal Talons Eco Line. So as you can see these are still quite thin but compared to the Tombow Fudosuke Hard Tip they are thicker. Let's have a little look at how thick the thick lines go. So these are all pretty consistent with each other in terms of the small pens. I have pressed quite hard with the small pens and the reason I've done that is because they are quite durable and they tend to bounce back. I are, I'm not going to put my full pressure on these thicker pens because sometimes that can damage them. But straight away you can already see that they're much thicker. And then the eco line. So I don't know if you could see then, but the eco line has a super flexible nib, so it just bent all the way so I could use the side of it. So when we look at the thicker lines, we can really start seeing a contrast in terms of the difference between big pens and small pens. You may have also noticed that these are a bit longer than these lines, and that's just because if I was to do a short thin line with such a thick pen, it wouldn't look like a line, it would probably just look like a dot. Okay, let's do a letter. And what I'm gonna do is try and make it so all the letters are the same height. So if we go along this line here. And then we're gonna go along this line. So for the small and the big pens, they're going to both be the same height, but we'll see what difference the, the size of the nib makes. We're going to do the letter A. So this is the soft one. And then the hard one. You can see the difference between the soft and the hard nib. This is just a little bit sharper on the curves and also the thin lines are much thinner. However, in general, these all look quite similar. Now, if I was to do an A, but using the same height as the small pens, but with a big pen, let's see how that works. You can see the big pens are much chunkier and because the height of this letter here is quite small it did make it a little bit hard to transition into that curve whereas when you use smaller pens that space can be reduced a little bit let's try doing even small letters and seeing the difference so these are just going to be the height of one dotted grid area and we'll do the letter a again So although this is tightened up in terms of the height, it wasn't too hard to create those letters. Let's see how it works with the larger nibs. So 
So although it is possible to create smaller letters with these big pens, I did find myself really struggling to control it and transition from those thick to thin lines. Whereas when creating the smaller letters with the small pens, it was a lot easier to control. Now let's try and do it with some bigger letters. Again, we'll do the letter A. So we can see straight away for the big pens that there is way more contrast between the thick and thin lines on these larger letters. We've still got a really nice contrast going on with the small pens as well. I feel like for the big pens, the proportion between the thickness of the strokes and the size of the letters works really nicely here. However, up here in the small letters, it does feel a little bit more squished. I think that the large letters to the small pens still work really nicely as well. The reason we're getting this lovely contrast on the big pens for the large letter compared to the small letter is this because there's a little bit more time to think about going from the thick to thin. And because these nibs are much larger, it also makes them more flexible, meaning that they can be a little bit trickier to control, basically. One thing I like about the Zebra Mildliner brush pens is that although it is a bigger nib and it's creating these much thicker lines, it is quite a stiff nib. So when it comes to doing the thin lines, it is a lot easier to control. These are quite similar to some of the thin lines on the small pens. So this pen's definitely a really good in-between for smaller pens and big pens. In general though, the small pens are just a lot easier to control. So if you're already doing a bit of calligraphy and, you're, and you've got one of these big pens or another pen that has got quite a big nib and you're struggling, then give it a go trying one of the small pens. As you can see, there's a little bit more control with it. Also, when we write at home, whether that's using a pencil or a biro or even a fountain pen, they are quite small nib pens. So I always say to beginners, it's always good to start with something that you're used to and then move on to the larger pens. I'm just gonna write the word hello for you in each of these pens but at comfortable size for the pen that I'm using and you can really see the difference that you can create with these pens. So for the small pens, although all of the nibs are pretty much the same size, I've actually varied the size of the letters. And that's just because each of the nibs have, has its own flexibility. So this one here that's quite stiff, it was a lot easier for me to go smaller. And then this one, which is the soft tip food and suki, is softer. Therefore, I found it a bit easier if the letters were a bit bigger. And it just gave me that time to think about the thin to thick lines. And then the pen tool sits quite nicely in the middle. Let's try out some of the big pens now.
Yeah. So for the Zebra Mild Liner and the Tombow Dual Brush Pen, I did try to keep them the same size, but because the Mild Liner is a little bit stiffer, you can see that the thin lines are thinner and just have a little bit more control compared to these thin lines on the Tombow. With the Royal Talents Eco Line, I went much bigger just because the nib is super flexible, which makes it a little bit hard to do the thin lines but also the thick lines are beautiful and bold and juicy. Therefore doing really big lettering with these pens is really good. Here you can really start to see the contrast between the different nibs and how you can use them to create different styles of lettering and different sizes as well. In general, I think the small brush pens are so much easier to use for beginners. And that's just because we're so used to writing at this smaller size. If you think about when you use like a biro or a pencil or a fountain pen maybe. We don't tend to write notes this big. Therefore, the concept of writing really big might feel a little bit strange at first. So this is a little bit of a normal size for writing. Also, because the nibs are a little smaller and a little bit more stiff, it does make it easier to control. So if you're already doing a little bit of calligraphy and you're struggling a bit, it might be down to the size of your pen. So if you're using quite a big pen, then have a little look at using a small pen and see how you get on. You might find it a lot easier to control. Once you've got the hang of your drills and your letters using the small pen, when you go back to the big pen, it will feel so much more natural and easy to use. So I definitely recommend going from small to big. It's interesting the smaller pens are all pretty consistent with each other, whereas when it goes to the bigger pens, there is um, more of a difference in flexibility of the nib and the size of the nib as well especially when you compare the eco line to the tombow the tombow actually has the bigger nib but because it's not as flexible as the eco line it does mean that you can write smaller letters with it okay so there's clearly a big contender i really recommend getting your hands on smaller brush pens if you're starting out they're just so much easier to use that being said what i find with a lot of my students is that they'll have a go using small pens at first and then after practicing for a little while like not even for like days just a few hours when they jump onto the big pens they actually really enjoy it and they start feeling a lot more creative so i think that's really where building your muscle memory comes into play and it's just transitioning from those smaller movements to those bigger movements so although these pens are a little bit trickier for beginners to use just because of the size of them if you did want to change up your lettering a little bit, then I definitely recommend all of these pens. As I said already, I think the Zebra Mild Liner pens are really good for beginners, even though they are bigger, because the nib is a little bit stiffer compared to some of these other big pens. So it might be a good idea getting some of these first. And once you start getting the hang of it, using these bigger pens is quite a lot of fun, especially for things like the Eco Line and the Tombow that blend really nicely, so you can start getting a little bit creative with your calligraphy. As you can probably tell, I definitely favour the smaller brush pens, and I'm just a little bit obsessed with this pen tool pen. It, it's just great for beginners, and they come in lots of pretty colours too. But let me know in the comments below which you prefer. Do you prefer bigger pens or smaller pens? And if so, which brands do you prefer as well? These here are definitely like some of my favorite brands. And although I do favor the small pens, I do like these pens too. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and it gave you a better idea of what pens to start off with if you're just starting calligraphy, or if you've already got a couple of pens and you just wanted to see the differences between a few, then I hope this was helpful for you. If you enjoyed watching this video, then give it a thumbs up for me because that would just make me happy. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon. Bye.